In this video, we're going to be solving trig equations that contain the functions secant, cosecant, and cotangent. If you've already watched my video on solving trigonometric equations, there won't be that much new here. It just involves the knowledge of these functions and some other identities we didn't use in that video. Okay, so starting with this first problem, we have cotangent squared take three cosecant plus three equals zero and we're looking for theta between zero and two pi. We have looked at equations like this with sine and cosine. So when you have two different functions, often it's good to see if you can write one function in terms of the other function. So we're going to use one of these identities here to write cotangent squared in terms of cosecant, and then we're going to have the whole equation in terms of cosecant, and it's going to be a quadratic. Uh, so you can see the process is similar to if you have cosine and sine, but you just need the knowledge of these other identities as well. So cotangent, if cosecant squared equals one plus cotangent squared, then cotangent squared equals cosecant take one. So let's plug that in for cotangent and then we'll simplify. Okay, now it's all in terms of cosecant. Let's combine the like terms. So we've got plus three take one, that's plus two. So let's write that out again. So we have cosecant squared take three cosecant plus two equals zero. And now let's see if we can factorize. If you find it easier to write this as x squared take three x plus two equals zero, uh, then you can do that as well, letting cosecant equal x. So looking at this, uh, can we factorize it? Are there factors of two that make negative three? Yes, there are. We could factorize this to x take two and x take one. Right, so that's a plus two on the end and then we get that negative three term in the middle. Okay, so this factorizes nicely. And now we have cosecant equals two or cosecant equals one. Now is a good time to write cosecant in terms of sine theta. Uh, so I should have said this at the start, we need to remember that secant is one over cosine theta, cosecant theta is one over sine theta and cotangent is one over tan theta. Um, so let's plug that in now for cosecant and then we can solve for theta. So we get one over sine theta equals two or one over sine theta equals one. Then it follows that uh, sine theta equals a half or sine theta equals one. Okay, let's draw up our unit circle. There we go. So what does this mean if uh, sine theta equals a half. If you're not familiar with this process yet, I encourage you to watch my video on solving true equations and also my video on the unit circle to explain this. Uh, but here we say that uh, the y coordinate of the point on the circle is a half. Uh, I should draw a dotted line. And what we want here is the angle of rotation to that point from one zero. So we're looking for this angle of rotation from one zero. And we're also looking for the angle of rotation to the other point. Um, so again, when this is sine theta equals a half, these points on the unit circle have a y coordinate of a half. And what this question is asking is what is that angle of rotation to that point when sine theta equals a half? Um, so then we need our uh, exact values. So you should know that when sine theta equals a half, theta is going to equal uh, pi on six. And we need to give our answers in radians here because our interval is in radians. Um, so this angle in here is going to be pi on six. And then uh, the angle of rotation to the second point is going to be pi take pi on six, that's five pi on six. And then when sine theta equals one, there's only one point between zero and two pi where sine theta equals one. That's up here, that's where the y coordinate is one, that's where theta equals pi on two. Okay, so our final answer there is for theta, uh, pi on six, pi on two, and five pi on six. You could write them all out in one list. I've run out uh, a little bit of room, so I'll just leave it there. Um, there was another problem up here that I was going to solve, but I need to put that down below. So let me just do that quickly. Okay, did a little bit of rearranging. We have another problem here. It says cotangent of two x equals root three. And for this question, all you really need to remember is that cotangent is one over 10. So this is, so we can write this as one over 10 of two x equals root three, and then 10 of two x equals one over root three. Um, so then 
uh, you can remember your exact value when 10 of 2x equals 1 on root 3. Um, so I'll bring up these triangles. I think it's always helpful to, to bring these up every now and again. Um, so the triangle we want here is the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. And so here 10 is opposite over adjacent. So we want this angle in here. It's opposite the smaller side, so that's going to be pi on 6. Uh, so then uh, our reference angle is pi on 6. So we go to our unit circle. Let's draw that up quickly. And the tan function is positive. We had a positive value for tan. So it's positive in the first and the third quadrants because the radius has a positive gradient. That's one way to remember that. The tan function you can think of as representing uh, the gradient of the radius. If it's positive, it's in the first and the third quadrants. This angle in here is pi on six. That's our reference angle. And same with the angle over here. And we are looking at the interval zero to two pi. We have two solutions, uh, but actually if we look at 2x, we need to extend that interval. So we need to multiply the whole thing by 2. So 2x is between 0 and 4 pi. So we're going to have two more solutions there. Um, so we're going to go around twice, around the circle twice. Um, so for 2x, we get uh, our initial answer, pi on 6 then pi plus pi on six for this answer over here. Pi plus pi on six, uh, that's seven pi on six. Then two pi plus pi on six, that's 13 pi on six. And three pi plus pi on six, that is 19 pi on six. Okay, then we divide by two to get x and we get our final solutions. And they're all just going to be over 12. That's what happens when we divide by two. So let me just write those out. And there we go, that's your final, uh, they're your final answers for the second example here. Okay, on to the next one. This one says cotangent x secant x plus two cotangent x equals zero. And it has the same interval. I just don't have room to write it again, but it's this interval zero to two pi. For this equation, I would suggest writing all of these functions in terms of sine and cosine. So cotangent, we can write as cosine x over sine x. Then secant is one over cosine. Then cotangent is cosine over sine. Here we can cancel these cosines uh, because cosine of x could not equal zero. Otherwise we'd get uh, secant x being undefined. So, you know, cosine of x is not a valid solution to this equation, so we can cancel them here. Um, and then we get 1 over sine x plus 2 cosine x over sine x equals 0. Then we can multiply through by sine of x. And so we get this. And then we end up with cosine of x equal to negative a half. This also has an exact value, which gives us a reference angle of pi on two. That comes from, again, this triangle, one, two, root three triangle. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be this angle up here, pi on three. Okay, so then we get a reference angle. Why did I say pi on two, sorry? Pi on three, I should have written there. Pi on three. I like to draw up another unit circle, even if I drew another one just before, I, I like to draw another one again. So our reference angle is pi on three and we have a negative value for cosine. That means the x value uh, is negative. In other words, we have negative a half as the x corner of the points on the unit circle. And we are looking for the angle of rotation to those points. Okay, so we're looking for this angle and we are looking for the angle to the second point there. And this angle in here is pi on three. So this angle is going to be pi take pi on three, pi take pi on three is two pi on three, and then pi plus pi on three is four pi on three. 
and they are your final solutions. Okay, on to the next one. Example four says secant squared x takes six tan x plus four equals zero in the interval zero to two pi. Um, so here we want to write either secant or tan as in terms of the other function. Uh, and if we remember that identity, we just wrote down at the start, secant equals secant squared theta equals one plus tan squared theta. We can substitute that in here for secant. So we can write this as tan squared x plus one, take six tan x plus four equals zero. And now simplifying further, we get a nice quadratic, which hopefully we can factorize. So plus four plus one is plus five. Other factors of five that make negative six? Yes, we can write this as tan x take uh, one and tan x takes, take five. And we get the quadratic. Then we can say tan of x equals one or tan of x equals five. We're going to need our calculators for that one. But for tan of x, we do have an exact value. So we can say the reference angle when tan of x equals one. Uh, this comes from the other right triangle, the 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So when you have a right triangle with sides of one, one and root two, uh, in terms of radians, the angles are pi and four and pi and four, then uh, tan and pi and four is opposite over adjacent one over one. So our reference angle there is pi and four. And our reference angle for tan of x, you need to put inverse tan of five in your calculator in radians, and you get uh, approximately 1.37. Um, but I'll just write a few more. Okay, so then we can go to our unit circle and check where these solutions will be. So when tan of x equals one, or sorry, when tan of x is positive, that's when the radius, the gradient of the radius is positive. That's in the first and the third quadrants. So our angle in there is pi and four. Then when tan of x equals five, again, that will be in the first and the third quadrants. And our reference angle there is 1.37. And we're looking for the interval zero to two pi, so we're going to get four solutions. So for x, we get pi on four then this solution in here will be pi plus pi and four. So that's five pi and four. Then this second solution in the first quadrant will just be 1.37 radians. And in the third quadrant, that will be pi plus 1.37 radians. If you put that into your calculator, you get approximately 4.51 radians. Okay, so there you go, that's your final solution there. On to the next one. Here we have cotangent of x take pi and four equals one. Uh, so this one is pretty straightforward. All you need to really remember is that cotangent is one over 10. So we could write this as one over 10 of x take pi and four equals one, then rearrange the equation. And we have that, well, this must equal one, right? One over one is one. So 10 of x take pi and four equals one. And then we can find our reference angle. Uh, this has an exact value, which we just used in the previous example. Uh, that's pi on four. So when 10 of something equals one, that something will be pi on four. Okay, so let's check on our unit circle where these solutions will be. We have a positive value for the 10 function. So again, that's in the first and the third quadrants. And the solutions are going to be very similar to the last example, except for without two of them. Actually, I should have said we need to check our interval. So for x, it's between zero and two pi. For x take pi and four, it would be between negative pi and four and um, what would it, two pi take pi and four, uh, seven pi and four, but this doesn't really matter because we still get the same solution. So, but it is important to check that interval when you change the input of the, the trig function. Okay, so we have x take pi and four 
equals um, pi on 4, so that solution in the first quadrant, and uh, pi plus pi on 4, pi, pi on 4, and then we add pi on 4 to each, so pi on 4 plus pi on 4, a quarter plus a quarter is a half, so that'd be pi on 2, then 5 pi on 4 plus a quarter is uh, one and a half, so three pi and two. So they are your final solutions there. On to the next one. This will be the last example in this video. Uh, so we have root three secant squared theta take one plus root three tan theta plus one equals root three. Here we're going to use the identity that secant squared theta equals one plus tan squared theta, so that it is all in terms of tan. So we get root three, one plus 10 squared theta, and so on. Let me just write all this out again. If we expand these brackets, we get an extra root three here, which we can cancel. So we've got a plus root three and a negative root three. They're going to cancel out. Now this is an interesting uh, quadratic. So you might also be tempted to expand these brackets, um, and I don't think you need to and I'll explain why after I write all of this out again. Okay, so here I think it's easy to see how to factorize this if you keep these this coefficient here in its brackets. Uh, rather than expanding, so you get negative tan theta take root three tan theta. I think it's easy to see because you can factorize this and you can see that, well, the factors of one are one and one. And then if we write it like so, so if we do negative one in the first set of brackets, then 10 theta take one in the second set of brackets. If you expand this out, we get root three 10 squared theta, take root three 10 theta, take 10 theta, which would give us this middle term, and then we get plus one on the end. So even though it looks kind of messy with these root threes, it's actually quite nice to factorize. And if you're thinking, oh, I would never spot to factorize this in, a, in an exam, don't worry because then you could just use the quadratic formula or your calculator, so your quadratic solver in your calculator. Um, so, you know, you don't always have to spot these things really with a quadratic equation. Um, so, okay, so we have solutions then for tan theta of one on root three and one. These have exact values. One on root three gives us a reference angle of pi on six. And one gives us a reference angle of pi on four. Let's go to our unit circle to check where these solutions will be. So they're both positive. So they're both going to be in the first and the third quadrants. Um, pi on six is less than pi on four, right? So it looked like that. So this angle in here is pi on six. This angle is pi on four, all the way there. So then we have solutions for theta of pi on six, pi plus pi on six, which is seven pi on six. And then when the reference angle is pi on four, we'll have theta equal to pi on four and pi plus pi on four, which is five pi on four. And they are all our all of our solutions for the interval we're looking at. Did I write that interval down for that problem? If I did mention the interval before, sorry, uh, but it was the same as the rest of the problems between zero and two pi. Apologies if I didn't mention that little detail. Okay, so that was uh, some trig equations with secant, cosecant, and cotangent. The problems themselves weren't really more challenging than the ones I went through in my original trig equations video. Uh, but I realized I didn't do any examples in that video with these functions and, and using these identities like secant squared theta equals one plus tan squared theta. So I want to do some of those types of equations. Hope you found this video helpful. Please leave a like if you did and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.